You've got dieting, registering, checking in, weighing in, tanning, carving up, pumping up, prejudging, finals, all kinds of stuff going into a bodybuilding show. And going into it, I had not a clue what to expect and what the timeline of things were. So I'm gonna let you know what to expect going into your first bodybuilding show. So first off, of course, there's the dieting, the timeline to get you in shape that you want. Hopefully you figure it out for yourself. I have videos on how I did my diet. that may help you out, but you just really gotta figure out, figure out how much you need to lose, how many calories you gotta cut per day, weekly for hitting those gates, getting into your show and making sure that you're where you need to be for that. And then also you have to find a show and register for it, which I also have a video going into depth on how to find shows around you, how to register for them, what's required with the NPC card, registration fees, the different classes and all that. So I have those videos and others as well linked in the description to help you out with figuring out those things if you're not at that stage yet. But when it comes to the actual competition, you've dieted down, you're ready to go, Typically, you're gonna have check-ins and weigh-ins the day before the competition. So in my case, Friday evening, I think it was between like five and 7 p.m. was check-in. So you arrive there at the venue, or not necessarily the venue, in my case, it was the hotel where they had the tanning going on, and you check in. So you give them your information, your NPC card that you registered and paid for already, and they check you in, give you your number, you move on, go to the weigh-in section. So for me, I just left all my normal clothes on because my weight cap, I think, was 210 or something like that for an amateur, and I was at 175. I was carving up. But when it comes to carving up, that's something to think about because for me, I'm already way below the weight cap. Natural, you know, I'm not huge. There were guys, obviously, a lot of them on PED, so you may be having to cut down to get below whatever weight class you need to be in. So for me, no big deal, but if you're doing your carb up that day before, you need to keep in mind, when is my way in? How much do I need to lose? If you don't have to lose any, like me, then no big deal. I just did my carb up like I've done in past years, and I was fine, but you may have to start waiting to eat and put in those carbs till after you do your weigh-in if you're really close on the way in there. And that would make things more difficult because you know, checking in, weighing in at 5 p.m. You got pre-judging the next morning at eight o'clock. So that's a lot of food to start packing in carbs in a smaller amount of time, especially with you sleeping a lot of the night. So keep that in mind, figure out how you're gonna work your food. So after you get that taken care of, you make sure you're in your weight class. If there's a weight class for you, I did classic physique. And if you don't have weight class, then no big deal. You're still gonna weigh in so they have those stats on you and then you move on to the guys who you give your music to so you got to pick a music for a routine that you're going to do typically it's around one minute max for these entry level shows that you do you see like at the olympia they have longer ones guys are doing but you know there's a lot of people watching that and it's a longer event but for this they're trying to just get through it pretty quickly so one minute max bring your music on a flash drive that you're going to give to them they take it the guy put it on his computer checked it and he just transferred it over and then gave me the flash drive back so they don't even keep it in most cases probably. And then you move over to the next section where there's a guy set up there as the official photographer and videographer. And if you want to get a package for them, they got picture packages, video, or the whole thing. I think it was like 130 bucks or something like that for mine. And so I figured, you know, what the heck, I might as well. I've already paid money for all the registrations and stuff. I wanna have good video and good pictures for this, which that's gonna depend on the venue because the lighting on ours wasn't great. It was almost directly overhead, so the bottom half of almost everyone was shattered and didn't look that good compared to my own lighting setup I had when practicing posing and all that. So be aware of lighting at the venue. When you're out there, you know, see, maybe watch some other classes before you and see how the lighting affects them. And maybe you might need to lean back a little bit so that the light hits the rest of your body. We'll get onto that stuff later, but I went ahead and paid for the package there, so then after the fact, the guy emailed me a link and then I was able to have all the footage and video from the show. And then after that, a lot of people are going over the tanning section. They have it scheduled all day long for tannings. Depends on if you wanna do it. I decided to just go ahead and do it because I'm pretty dark, but where my clothes are, I have pretty noticeable tan lines, and so I figured that wouldn't look very good. Had mine set up for, I think it was called Tan to Win. It depends on who's running at your place, but when you register, they're gonna send you all kinds of emails with who's running the events and venues and who to get in touch with. So I went ahead and paid for that, I don't know, like months prior, and when I got my initial email, it said, my tanning appointment was, I think, 
7 p.m. pretty much right at the end of check-in. So I went pretty close to the end of check-in, went to Five Guys and had a large fry as part of my carb up and then went back and got my tan done. And in the email they sent me, they also had the second tan set up the next morning initially for like 3.30 a.m. And I was like, that is not gonna work. So I live an hour and 15 minutes away from where the event was. I was driving home that night. I said, there's no way I'm driving back here in like five hours to get another tan the next day. So I emailed them and said, hey, is it possible for me to get my second tan like as late as possible in the morning because I don't live here. I'm not staying at the venue at the hotel. I'm driving home, driving back in the morning and that'll be terrible. And they accommodated, it was really nice. I got there around 6.30 in the morning and uh, got my second tan, it was good to go. And when it comes to tanning, depending on what class you're in is depending on how it's gonna go. If you're doing men's physique where you got the board shorts, you'll probably just be in some underwear, they'll tan you up good. If you're in the classic physique like me, it says to bring a sock and uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same if you're in uh, men's bodybuilding as well. And you pretty much just stand there, you can guess where the sock goes and they spray you down front and back all over and it's pretty cold in there, it's uncomfortable, it just feels weird and sticky. And they say don't wear cotton stuff but I just wore had really big baggy cotton stuff I got from Walmart and it will stick to the tan and a lot of it's gonna come off in your clothes so just be ready for your clothes to be destroyed, whatever you decide to wear over top of that tan. And the same goes for if you're staying at a hotel or if you're going back home, bring your own sheets or some towels or stuff. I just laid on top of my bed on some old towels and uh, didn't get any tan on the sheets or anything. It was pretty much dry in the morning, so that was fine, but then you go back. I got the second coat, and since the first one already soaked in a lot, the second one dried a lot quicker. And once I got home, I got some uh, old, looser, non-cotton, like nylon type stuff that I had found that I hadn't worn in forever, but it was looser, didn't stick to me, it was a lot more comfortable, and I just wore that over top of my posing trunks and I was good to go. And speaking of the trunks, there's regulations on what kind of trunks you can have, how long or short they can be, and um, I just went to the link to the typical NPC posing trunks for classic physique and ordered some of those. I ordered a couple different sizes because I didn't know what would fit me, but it pretty much says NPC on the front. A lot of guys had their own other ones, but I knew I'd be good with that because I didn't want to get there and be like, hey, you can't wear that. You need to find something else. And then I don't have anything else. So then, you know, I'm out after all this work and prep. And then just went home after that, tried to get a good night's sleep, finished my carb up. And it's pretty impressive what you look like after going from cutting out water, cutting all your carbs throughout the week, and then carving up without water that day before and after is pretty noticeable without even pumping up. So if you do it right, you'll be pretty impressed, but just remember that it's not something that's gonna last, it's your peaking, it's literally called peaking. And if you don't know how that works with the peak week, I have multiple, multiple videos on the channel showing peak week, showing how I went through it, what exactly I ate at every meal, all the way leading up to the show and during the show to help you out if you don't know what to do, because it's an interesting process. And it's very tiring, keep in mind throughout this whole thing, you're going there to weigh in and do all this stuff, you're gonna feel better because you're carving up, but you're still just gonna feel like really tired initially and worn out from not having carbs, dehydrating, not drinking much water is not comfortable. It's not healthy to do this, keep that in mind, but it's just a process you go through to try to get that shredded dry look. So then moving on to show day, went back in the morning, still continuing my slow carb up at this point, so I'm already pretty full, just trying to keep it going at that point from anything I lost overnight. And then getting the second tan, it was quick, it doesn't take long with the second one, since it's not having to soak into your skin as much and you get really dark looking. Got in the car, drove the 10 minutes over to the actual venue, and just went in and uh, sat down, put my stuff backstage, looked at the venue, seeing how they're setting up. I was watching them set up the stage and putting the tape down and markers and everything. And looking back at it, I was just thinking, how hard would it have been to have a guy stand there and see, okay, where does the light look good on this person? So then let's set the tape there instead of having it literally almost directly under the light. So it's like, you know, this would be dark. Everything under my chest is dark. And I didn't really stick my legs forward that much. A few of the guys would put a leg forward and you could see their quad a lot better, but mine were dark, so it's kind of frustrating with the pictures I got back. Especially me running a separate channel, I talk about filmmaking and how big of a deal lighting is. And when you're at a beauty pageant, essentially, you want lighting to be good because you want people to look their best. But you know, all you can do is look your best and go with what they have going on at the venue, know what you're working with, and try to make the most out of it. And then the hardest thing for me at this point was the eating because I wasn't really sure what I need to eat, how much I need to eat, because I've done multiple peak weeks over the past few years, but it was all just leading up to a photo shoot. Essentially, I would do the photo shoot Saturday morning, and then, you know, everything's back to normal after that. But with this, you've got pre-judging in the morning. I think it started sometime between eight and nine, I forget what exactly. But then you do that, you get through with your part, and then you've got like 
five, six hours until the finals night show. And then you go do all the same stuff again, essentially for the finals and then it's over. So I knew what to eat leading up to the pre-judging, but after that, I wasn't really quite sure. And we'll go over that in a bit. But when it came to the pre-judging, I was a little bit confused on the order because I couldn't find anything consistent online on what was gonna happen. And they gave some speeches at the beginning, welcoming everyone, blah, blah, blah. And then I went up to a couple of the workers afterwards asking, hey, you know what to expect? Are we doing our music posing routine now or is that only tonight? What order is it going in? Are we doing individual stuff or is it all group? And not really anyone could give me an answer. So I just went back and they had long sheets of paper showing the classes. So I kind of got an idea of where I was gonna be in the order of things, but still, I didn't know how fast it would go as far as when to start eating things, when to pump up. When it comes to pumping up, depending on the venue where you are, a lot of them just say, there's no weights allowed backstage, so just bring bands. And so you get used to having some bands that are somewhat useful for you. You know, you can step on them and pull, bend over and do some rows for your back. Obviously you can do curls, doing push-ups. I didn't do a whole lot of squats, a little bit, maybe just to get some blood flow to my legs, but I've noticed when I do my leg days and I do a bunch of squats and I flex, I really can't see a lot of detail because they're so much fuller. So I almost want my legs to be a little more depleted so you can see the cuts in them more. It just depends on you and what works out for you. But no, when it comes to pumping up, you probably won't have access to weights. Rubber bands are the most likely thing that you'll have access to. So make sure you know how you can pump up your body with that. Maybe practice doing some of that leading into it. Also, while you're backstage pumping up getting ready they'll have a tanning booth set up and then a glazing area so have someone back there patting you down in case you have a part that got rubbed off some or maybe sweating some they'll dry you and pat some tan on to blend it back in and then right before you go on they have guys kind of go in and you get like a light glaze on you so that you don't look wet but it just makes you shine a little more for making your muscles stand out. And essentially, if you can imagine the stage was like this, you know, we'd come out here, we're just all lined up behind the curtain as the different groups were going. So I was in classic physique C, and they're all A, B, C, D, or based on height categories. So the A guys went and we're waiting, and then you can hear what they're going through. So if you're one of the later classes, you know what to expect as you're sitting there. And then you're just kind of hanging backstage with the guys while you're waiting, talking about stuff. Some people didn't talk at all, they were just in the zone, but I was, just enjoying the experience, something new, trying to pump up. And that's the thing too, you wanna to pump up, not do too much, kind of figure out how long is it gonna take before I get up there. Depends on the venue you're at, how many people are entered and going through at the time. And so how it worked for my show is we went out, we did the group posing, and that was it. So we went out there, did the quarter turns, and with all this posing, I have videos on how to do quarter turns, how to do the mandatory poses, and also picking your favorite classic physique pose if you're in a classic physique. So that just depends on what you're doing. And uh, just being ready for all that and practicing, you really need to practice posing a lot months leading into it. So you can hit all these poses without thinking about it and hold them for a long time because the judges are standing there looking back and forth between everyone. You wanna hold it the best of your ability the whole time. My right quad, I think it was, started nodding up because I'd cut sodium. I was had introduced it back in the night before, but I guess I didn't have enough that morning and I could feel my quad cramping up, which I'd never really had before and it's pretty uncomfortable. I just kept thinking, you're not gonna die, just keep flexing as hard as you can. So you go through all of it. I mean, you might be up there for five minutes on stage, all this stuff in your like five minutes, comparing everyone, quarter turns, mandatory poses, and they may call out a pose that you didn't expect, so just be ready for all the normal classic physique and normal bodybuilding poses because they make like a side tricep isn't technically a classic physique pose, but they called that one out. And then after that, you're done. You know, some events like watching the Mr. Olympia before they did the group posing, they had just house music playing and a guy would come out for 30 to 60 seconds and just go through his own poses. There's not any specific ones you do, but just show off your body the best. So be ready for that. What are your favorite poses? And think about a little flow you can do and just doing it to whatever music they have playing. But for these smaller shows, probably not the case. They're just trying to get through everyone. And after that, just went backstage again and uh, watching other people eating their rice cakes and rice, chicken, different things, depending on what you're doing. I just went ahead and left the venue and walked around for a bit. I think I went to there's a Bass Pro Shop there. I walked around there for like an hour. I went to a Chick-fil-A and this is where I was thinking like, I don't really know what to eat, but from carving up the day before, I would just have a little bit of protein with some of my meals and then a lot of carbs. I went and got a large fry from Chick-fil-A and small grilled nuggets with some barbecue sauce and ate that. I wasn't really hungry. I had some candy that I snacked on too, just getting carbs in and similar to what I did the day before. And a lot of the guys were like, yeah, I went out and had a steak. I got a burger, all this stuff. I just don't want that 
heavy meal sitting in my stomach and my stomach to be bloated when I come back for the night show. They pretty much do all their judging at the pre-judging and already know who they're gonna pick and the night show is just for you to show off more, but still, I wanna look as good as I can later. So depending on who you are, I don't know. Everyone has their own philosophies on that, on what you should eat and how you should do it. And it's a learning curve. This is my first time going all day doing that. And next year I plan on doing a natural show the day after the show that I'm gonna do. So it's gonna be like two days of trying to maintain that same look with carving up two days in a row essentially, and then working for both shows. But then you come back for finals and it's essentially the same thing. Everything goes in the same order. You eat whatever you brought, rice cakes is what I saw most people eating and some candies. You go back, start pumping up again when it's your turn and just be aware like, it might be cold. It was pretty cold backstage at that venue. So it's like my veins were shrunken down and usually they're pretty big when I get pumped up. So I'm like doing a ton of push-ups and different stuff, just trying to keep myself warm because you start getting cold back there and then it makes you not look as big, like you're shrinking up. You get pumped up, get through the glaze thing again and then go out. You do your group posing once more, the same thing you did in the morning. So just whatever you did before, expect to do the same thing and they're moving people around, comparing people. If you're in the middle or towards the middle, you're close to first place. If you're on the outsides the whole time, then you're probably one of the worst placing. So I got moved around a few times, ended up fourth place out of six. So, you know, it is what it is, but then you go off stage and then I think I was the first one back out and you do your posing routine. So you go out there and you'll have set in there like, do they start the music when you're walking out or when you get to the middle? And I think mine, I had set to when I actually got to the middle. So you just walk out there and the music starts playing. You go through your posing routine that you practiced a bunch and then you're done. You head off backstage and wait. And after they do everyone in your group, they bring you all back out and they give out the awards to everyone. So then you shuffle back off and whoever got first place in each event. So you've got classic physique. I'm referring to classic physique because that's what I was in. If you were doing bodybuilding, they've got lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight, all the different versions of that. But for me, classic physique, you've got the winner of A, B, C, and I think there are only three categories. Some of them have a D depending on how tall people are. But then they bring those three winners out and then they have a pose down between them. They do judges calling out posing and then a little pose down they'll play some music and pose for a minute or so and they'll call out the overall winner of the classic physique category or whichever one you're doing so you can win your individual category within classic physique c but then also win the overall so ideally you would want to try to win the overall i wasn't even close but now i know what to expect and how i'm going to improve for the next time i do one and after all that you go off stage you're done they may if you were the winner bring you back on afterwards and get pictures with everyone who won every division for their own pictures and promos and stuff that they use for the next year. But the biggest thing I would say to keep in mind is don't just go crazy after the show. Yeah, go have some good meals, eat the pizza and whatever burgers, steaks you want to have that you haven't had for a while, but plan a diet for the next one to two weeks afterwards because when you've had that goal for so long and you get there and then you're done and you have no goal after that, it's kind of like, oh, well, I'll just eat whatever I want and you can feel so terrible like you, just start eating and eating, your stomach hurts, but then as soon as it hurts, quits hurting just enough, you'll start eating again, even though you're not really hungry, just because you've been so hungry for a long time and it's like, your mind just goes on autopilot, it's crazy. So I would plan, okay, I'm gonna, not diet like I was doing before, but plan a diet of like, I'm gonna eat 500 extra calories a day of the same clean foods I've been eating all along. And once you get a week or two where you've been eating more, your weight's not shooting up, but you're, not feeling super hungry anymore. Your weight is gonna be going up, but your hunger is kind of like getting to normal. Then start introducing those better, tastier foods and then slowly add onto that so that you're not just gaining 20, 30 pounds over the next two weeks because that'll be pretty demotivating for you. I gained like 10, I think, over the next week, which a lot of that's getting water back in your system, glycogen restored. It's not like 10 pounds of fat, but some people can. Larry Wheels just did Olympia and apparently gained like 50 pounds over the next week. So don't go crazy, have a plan. If you got any questions, put them down below. I know that's a lot of stuff and it really depends on the show you're doing and where it is, how many people are in it. Things can vary, but that was the timeline for how it worked for me. So if this is helpful, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, check out Instagram at Camber Fitness to follow my bodybuilding and powerlifting journey that I'm working on right now. I'm about to do a show in not a couple months, next month. So we'll see how that goes and I'll see y'all in the next one.